in your ignorance you claim that man is not God if man is not God what is he once there is stoppage of the word in you it means your life is finished the world claims to know only God and nothing else whoever does not recognize the word does not recognize God the whole world needs to be pitied human beings are human beings are dissipating their energies and wasting their time praying for money husband wife children and all the material things many complain of problems from evil powers and so on these people do not realize that it happens to one according to his belief and faith the words that you speak act accordingly in you this is why you are enjoined to speak only positive words you should at all times endeavor to speak only edifying words words that are capable of bringing about spiritual upliftment i will now prove to you why there is need to divorce yourself of evil words and to speak only words that are capable of bringing love peace good health prosperity and all the good things unfortunately even the bible itself is filled with evil words if you utter positive words about yourself or another person the same will come to pass the words of satan bring about trouble nothing good or useful evil words bring about hatred distrust division war poverty and death there are some words that can be spoken and a group of people would be thrown into confusion and would hold each other on the throat the same confirms the fact that a city without a prophet is perished and a city that is without a speaker of edifying words of progress peace love unity and wisdom is doomed once there was a particular city with one particular family that considered themselves created to be poor the family was however blessed with educated knowledgeable handsome and beautiful people in terms of human resources it was blessed greatly but one thing they lacked was prosperity in material things it was their belief that god created them to be perpetually poor each time a member of that family went out to marry or was to be married the members of that family would firstly inform the suitor or included the bride that theirs were poor family from God they believed and lived in that notion and were even satisfied with the situation the situation could be compared to the encounter between the Ethiopian eunuch and Philip when philip inquired of him whether he knew what he was reading he simply answered by questioning philip about the possibility without being led by someone except he was taught he would not know but for philip the ethiopian eunuch 
would not have been converted on his way from a certain Jewish feast Philip met the Ethiopian eunuch trying to read the book of Isaiah when he accepted ignorance of the nomination therein Philip sat him on his horse and began to teach him as they traveled along. When they reached where there was water, he demanded that he should be baptized there. Philip agreed to baptize him so long as he believed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He accepted this immediately and was consequently baptized. This goes to prove to you that any city without a prophet is doomed. Therefore, a city that is without a speaker and a practitioner of truth is doomed. You have been told daily that God the Father is in our midst, yet you do not know him. The world is still searching for him in the moon, in the sky, in the sea, and on top of mountain, as if he is found, as if he is bound to a particular spot. Is there anyone in your midst who understands the things that are seen every day? Romans chapter 10, verses 6 to 9. God's position with men has been clarified in the above text. One day a certain prophet came to the city where the self-acclaimed poor family lived to preach. As he was preaching, the wife of one of the members of the family told the story of their poverty to the prophet. The prophet laughed and asked the woman to repeat the story, and she did, feeling so concerned. The prophet immediately began to preach to her the words of the Bible as regards such belief. He pointed to her where it is said in the Bible that by a man's words he would be justified or condemned. He explained to her that the family members were responsible for their fate. He then asked the woman to declare and believe fervently that from that moment their family was blessed with riches and prosperity. The prophet also asked the woman to tell her husband and children to make the same declaration and believe same. The woman her husband and the children believed fervently and began to say as the prophet had directed. Others who watched them behave as the prophet that others others who watched them behave as the prophet had directed, laughed them to scorn. The prophet did not charge the woman any money for that knowledge. He left after that. The family continued to believe and say as they were directed. Before that week ran out, the husband was promoted in his place of work and his children who had finished schooling were gainfully employed. During the second week, the woman won a contract to supply food to the prison service. Within a short space of time that family became the richest in the community and has remained so even till this day. Such is the efficacy of the word. That explains how profitable it is to think and speak positive words always. 
our Lord Jesus Christ stated that whoever believes in him would not taste of death. He said that he is the bread of life and whosoever eats of him shall have everlasting life. All these are words of life, words of peace and prosperity. Whoever believes in them shall neither die nor be condemned nor be confronted with any problem. You can now realize that the poor family that became rich did not resort to juju or sacrifice to idol to be rich. They believe in the spoken word. Man is the architect of his woes. Whatever predicament you find yourself in, you are responsible. Your inability to practice the gospel comes from you. If you are fond of saying that you are unlucky, that people do not appreciate your good works and so on, the same will happen to you according to your belief and faith. You are always sighing and complaining of being worried by juju, mermaid, wizard, and so on. This is because you believe in such things, so they fulfill in you according to your faith. But if you do not believe in, in such, they will also not be effective in you. If you believe only in God, you will see and have nothing other than God. There was another case of a certain queen who lived in a city that was so terrorized by armed robbers both in the day and at night. She felt so concerned. One night as she went into her room to sleep, she knelt down and prayed to God to change the robbers, to give them employment and bless them. She said that the robbers were stealing out of despair as a result of luck and and hands as a result of luck and that they would not love to do so if they were gainfully employed. She committed all of them and their souls into God's hands. As the queen was praying inside her room, she did not know that the robbers had already surrounded her premises, and some of them were even hiding under her bed. But as she echoed, Amen, one of them emerged from under the bed and asked her whether she was aware that he was hiding under, the, under her bed. She said no. The robber made it known to her that they had planned to rob her that night, but because of her prayer, God had aborted their plan. The robbers came out one after the other, confessing to the queen about their plight and problem. They complained that they were married with children, some up to ten children. As such, they had problems to make both ends meet. They all confessed their wrongdoings and expressed their belief in the Queen's prayer that God would definitely help them, and the Queen too. The Queen gave them some money, but they would not take it because her prayer was sufficient. All the robbers quietly left. Before that week ran out, behold, the robbers were gainfully employed and robbery ceased in that community instantly. Can you realize now the effect of speaking words that are edifying? 
God is here with you, yet you do not know him. He continues to do his will, but none understand. Read our second lesson again. Second lesson, Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that he may know how he ought to answer every man. If from now you season your words with salt, your problems will surely cease. Now that you know that the world is light, power, good health, God, Son of God, angel, wisdom, peace, joy, and all the virtues, if you continue to speak only edifying words, you will have no problem. You will also realize that it is God that kills and he gives life. He exalts and debases and does everything. That is so because he is the word and the word is the origin of everything. If you say, it looks as if I am going to be sick, you will surely be sick. If you say, it appears as if I will fall and die, you will surely fall and die. If you say that people do not love you and do not reward you positively for the good things you do to them, the same will come to pass. You should even draw a lesson from the case of our Lord Jesus Christ when he said, I shall go to Jerusalem and there I will be tortured and killed, but shall resurrect on the third day. The same words came to pass as he had spoken. He also stated clearly that nobody was responsible for his predicament that he offered his life voluntarily and could secure it back at will. If he did not give his life, nobody would have been able to take it. Moreover, if he had not stated that God would make him to resurrect on the third day, he would not have resurrected. It is said that the word is so close to your mouth and heart and this is the word of faith which we preach ever since you came to brotherhood have you heard any evil words spoken by the holy father in as much as you do not know the power of the spoken words then your claim to know god is false that is why it is said that none can see God's face, but that we can only hear his voice. It is said in Hebrews chapter 3, 7 to 8, no person is capable of causing what is not in existence to come into being and what is existing to cease to exist except the word of God. There is nothing the word cannot do. Our Lord Jesus Christ healed the sick, raised the dead and performed many other miracles. All these were manifestations of the word. It was the same word he pronounced on the barren fig tree to wither it away. Lazarus died and on the fourth day Christ went to the graveside, spoke the same words to the Father in prayer and Lazarus resurrected. Before he did the miracle, 
when Christ was told that his friend Lazarus was dead, he told the people that he was not dead. That was the word that sustained Lazarus. To the leper and the rest of the afflicted who came to him, he did nothing but merely ask them what they wanted him to do for them. It was fulfilled to each and every one of them according to their faith. With all these wonderful things done, do you still believe in him? On the contrary, you are watching and waiting for a large per for a huge person with a long beard to come and tell you, Behold, I am the one expected. He is right here with you, very close to you. So also are death, sickness, and other problems close to you on your lips. This is why you are warned not to allow evil communications to proceed out of your mouth. Allow only words that are edifying to come out of your mouth. I give you all these examples and take enough time to fully expatriate on these facts so that you will know and believe that the word is God, the word is life, power, prosperity and everything. That is why it is said that in everything a man offends but that any person who is able to bridle his tongue is perfect. Therefore, a perfect man is the one who does not speak evil words and who believes in God and believes that everything originated from the word. That was why Christ did not speak evil words but uttered only positive words. Christ knew that whatever word he uttered would come to pass. Even where people were starving, sick, and dying, whenever Christ arrived there and uttered a positive statement, the situation became normal. The occult, the occultists, the metaphysicians, rely on the spoken word as their weapon and not on leaves or any other thing. Equally, if you go to a person's house and speak only positive words that God should bless him, protect him, give him long life and so on, the same will manifest for the man. Even the necromancer our juju doctor involves only the spoken words into the leaves, water, or whatever material they use. In the court, the judge relies purely on the words to decide a case. In the war front, except the commander speaks the word by way of command, would his troops open fire? The answer is no. Before a policeman would set out to arrest a person, he has to be authorized to do so. All are, all these explain the power of the word. Words identify a person. It is the Father, therefore, that does the work here and not you. It is for this reason that whoever you discharge of his problems stand so discharged. The Gospel, what is brotherhood, explains that the trees, the ants, the grass, the fish, the birds, the animals, human beings, and everything created are brotherhood. It is therefore very ridiculous 
when some of you would say that you are the only member of brotherhood in your family. There is nothing positive the world cannot achieve. It can change black into white, imperfection into perfection, death into life, and so on. A local adage has it that a cow uses his tongue to clean its young one newly delivered. I have lots of things to teach you. This has prompted me to desire that I should be with you every time of the day to teach you. I have not even opened my bag yet to bring out my course contents. Good words constitute the Holy Spirit, while evil words are evil spirit. Good words is God, while evil words is Satan. So long as you continue to speak good words, you identify with God and all good things will follow you. If you speak the words of love, mercy, kindness, and words filled with peace, patience, progress, togetherness, and prosperity, all will surely happen accordingly. The truth, love, humility, peace, and righteousness have now taken dominion all over the world. Time has since passed and gone when evil overwhelmed the world. Whoever is able to bridle his tongue and does not allow evil words to proceed out of his mouth is perfect and capable of ruling the world. Such is the person who knows the truth and has it. Whoever speaks the truth would know quite well that there is no impossibility with God. That is why the Father constantly pronounce positive words, words that are edifying. Soon you will realize that it is through these positive utterances that evil is conquered. Any person who gives you money, car, house, food, and all the material things, but has no good words in his mouth is satanic. A person who does not utter Evil communication is perfect. An illustration. Here is an illustration. The third illust Here is another illustration. The third illustration to confirm the efficacy of words concerns a king who was exiled. One day a certain prophet went to the village to preach and there he met with a son of the exiled king. When the prophet asked of his father, the young man said that he had been exiled. And when he inquired from him why they could not do something to prevent the king from being exiled? The young man said that they had engaged the services of 200 lawyers, prepared some juju, sacrificed human beings, bribed the council, but all to no avail. The prophet asked the young man whether they offered prayer. Then he told the prophet that the problem that took place did not call for prayer and that prayer could not solve it. The prophet asked the young man if he was still in need that his father should return and be restored to his throne. In his reaction, the young man expressed the impossibility of that. The prophet directed him to persistently say, Thank you, Father, for making my father to return. 
he did not ask him to burn any candle, incense, nor to sacrifice anything. The young man continued to say this time and time again until one day the village council rescinded its decision and recalled the king home. The ways in which God does his own things and perform his miracles confound human knowledge. This is because he does not follow conventional methods. That is why God's way cannot be understood by men. But if a human being does something, men easily believe it because his means is familiar and conventional. If prayer cannot solve a problem, what else would solve it? Of the tree, that is, the word, money, and conventional weapon. Which is most powerful? In reality, there is nothing which money or man can do. Read the golden text once more. Golden text, James chapter 3 verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. The distinction between prayers. There is a prayer of faith and the prayer of faithlessness. This is a big lesson on its own. There are vain words and also the words of God. There are words which you can speak from morning till night and will not yield any good fruit. But a person can utter a word and it will be so effective and powerful even if it is a jot as little as the mustard seed. That is why it is said that the word of God is like a mustard seed that is so minute but when it grows all the birds in the air make their nests on it and animals in the bush take shelter under it. This explains the reason why Christ told the Samaritan woman that they worship what they knew not. That is to say it was quite unnecessary for them to go to the mountain or to Jerusalem to worship God. He is not limited to these places. You can stay wherever you like but speak just the word and it will come to pass. Be positive always and endeavor to bid people the peace of God and it will surely come to pass. The prayer of faithlessness is offered when a person requests of God to give him money, wife, husband, food and other material things. This means that such a person has only succeeded in piling his request before God and left. Such will never be answered. But if you pray saying, Thank you Father for giving me food or money or whatever you desire, it will be done accordingly. That is the prayer of faith. You have to continue to thank God for everything. But if you, if you say to God that if he could give you a wife, a husband, or money, etc., you would praise him exceedingly, such a prayer is a manifestation of disbelief in God. I know that what I am teaching you is greater than you. It is advanced for you. Even so, this is the time of truth, the fullness of time for all to practice the word of God. From today, do not utter evil words again. 
Do not condemn. Do not curse or abuse anybody. Be steadfast in pronouncing only good words by the power of the spoken words. Whatever situation you find yourself, whether a sick person is brought before you or you are in a precarious position, if you utter good and edifying words, the situation will be changed from bad to good. Beloved, a stroke of the cane is sufficient unto the wise. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.